Hey, this is a follow-up to a video that I did previously on body composition, and we're gonna really dive into that personal fat threshold. So if you missed that first video, please go back and watch it. But a personal fat threshold is really where you go from that subcutaneous fat that nobody wants, but it's not as dangerous as your visceral fat, right? So that subcutaneous fat is that pinch an inch kind of fat, and, um, and when we go from subcutaneous fat and start spilling over into visceral fat, that's that fat that is within the abdomen and around the organs. And that's that dangerous fat, right? That's metabolically very dangerous, driving insulin resistance, diabetes, and among other things, cardiovascular risk and so on. So that personal fat threshold is really where we wanna target into how can we prevent the subcutaneous fat that all of us have from spilling over excessively into that dangerous visceral fat. So what I mentioned last time is there are certain things that drive a lower threshold to spill over into visceral fat. One of those is unfortunately genetics, right? So true, um, Southeast Asians, some Hispanic people, for example, have a lower threshold, which means that at a lower body mass index or where they just don't seem like they're carrying as much extra weight, they tend to go more towards uh, metabolic disturbance like um, insulin resistance, more visceral fat and more cardiovascular risk. Um, that said, those people and all of us have a lot of power through lifestyle as to how we can reduce that transfer over into that yucky visceral fat um, by a lot of things. Of course, one is exercise, right? Exercise is fantastic. Yes, both cardio and resistance training will make it less likely that you'll spill over into visceral fat. So absolutely do that. Um, sex hormones, okay, maybe we can't change that so much, but males uh, tend to have a lower threshold, be meaning they will spill over into visceral fat um, more readily than females. But females, as they get into perimenopause or menopause when their estrogen declines, will also uh, be more likely to go into that visceral fat range. That's why so often we'll see that, oh my gosh, I've never had a muffin top, my belly's never been a problem, I've got this weight gain, suddenly my cholesterol's high, they telling me I'm pre-diabetic or whatever in the perimenopausal um, time period. So sex hormones do play a role. But let's really focus in on this nutrition piece because this is really where there's a lot of power and there's also a lot of confusion. And I wanna highlight this article I thought was really fascinating in Diabetes Care in 2018. And basically they took three different groups of overweight individuals and they fed them 1,000 extra calories, all of them right but what they fed them was different in terms of what it was comprised of and they were specifically looking at saturated fat was one group so a thousand extra calories of saturated fat the second group was a thousand extra calories of unsaturated fat things like you know avocados um, olive oil um, nuts and seeds etc so usually those are plant-based unsaturated fats um, and then thirdly 1,000 extra calories of carbohydrates Okay, so when we looked at that in this group, this is really fascinating because yes, bear in mind that if you overeat calories, you will gain weight, you'll store fat. That's our fat storage, right? That's what we do with excess calories. But a calorie is not a calorie as we know. What's comprising that calorie has an effect on our body, on our microbiome, and on our inflammation, and also where and how we store that fat. So this was fascinating. What they found was that in the saturated fat group, that means they were eating 1,000 extra calories of saturated fat, they had over three times as much conversion into fatty liver that insulin resistant, that um, visceral fat pathway, then did the other two groups, the unsaturated fat and the carbohydrate groups, both of which increased fatty liver 15%. So overeating is not our goal, right? But they, they all increased it, but 55% increased in fatty liver, that is visceral fat, in the saturated fat overfed groups. So what does this mean? And also what they found was that there was a more negative, that is more inflammatory, inflammatory effect on the microbiome in the saturated fat group as compared to the other groups. 
So how do we take this information? Well, number one, we want to choose food that is not going to drive us to overeat, knowing that fat is the most calorie dense food and we're more likely to overeat calories if we're eating a lot of fat sources. That's true of unsaturated fat and saturated fat. But certainly if we're going to choose between the two, we want to choose unsaturated fat and we want to include that in our diet from whole plant foods, ideally, because well, it reduces premature death and it's good, but we don't want to go overboard, right? Because if we eat all the nut butter, right, not only might we be like strained into poo, but we also are going to increase our caloric intake and are going to make it much harder to lose weight, a pivotal piece of reversing insulin resistance for most, the vast majority of people, right? So choosing the foods that are going to help us be fully satisfied, get nourished, but also are going to be low in calories. What are those foods? Those are whole plant foods. Is that all you can eat? No, okay? You can eat a balanced nutrition. If you wanna include some carefully chosen animal products, then do that, but recognize that they're gonna be much higher in calories. They're lacking in fiber, which we know is how to support that microbiome to reduce inflammation. So there's so many different mechanisms why choosing a plant predominant dietary pattern and limiting the saturated fat foods like processed meat, red meat, full fat dairy, cheese, and so on is gonna benefit you. It's gonna reduce your risk of transferring over into that visceral fat um, and going down that metabolic cascade that so many of us are trying to prevent. So I hope this makes sense. Um, and please write me or with any other questions or what you'd like me to explain better. If I did not explain this well, thank you so much. And I so hope that this empowers you on your journey today. Have a good day.